We're starting right now with a 2005 Chevy 2500 with the Duramax. Um, today we're going to be replacing the radiator because it's really hard to see, but down here there's a nice crack in the tank. Let's see if I can get you. Yeah. Mm, kind of. So we're going to be doing the radiator and we're going to be doing the pulleys too. We're going to be doing two idlers, a tensioner, and a belt. So let me get you mounted and we'll get started. So first I take the air box out. So we have an eight up here, and then an eight right here. There you just call it and have a blank piece. Why? You said the rims are hard to take the hard to run. I knew that was going to be a problem. <sighs> okay. Um, I know you do. I just, I'm we'll have to take it somewhere else. Yeah. Let's we'll figure it out. We'll have to take it somewhere else. Okay, so we're going to continue unhooking the mass air. Try not to pull on the wires too much. These mass air are really tight. I'll use a pair of pliers to try not to break it. So we're going. I'm going to pull the other side off. I set it back there. We got the master unhooked. In like 20 minutes, we'll go pick up that truck. Okay. Got to love that. That one tight nose. Both the lowers are loose. It's always nice. Okay. So, next we got to do the fan truck. Um, this thing's missing all kinds of hardware. Missing clips, broken clips. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get this pin first. And then down here, there's another one on the same. Okay, and then next we have to do the FIC or not FIC on the TCM. Take these and a pinch. It should show you. Ooh, that works. Not today. Let's try my good pliers. You don't have to unhook this. It gives you a little bit more room. So we got the TCM out of the way. There's no clips in the shroud, so that's nice. See, and that makes it for a quick removal. I'm gonna set that right there. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the fan off. I use a 1 in 7 8 bit. focus over here um actually this isn't too bad the lower shroud i don't think comes out so it's a little fun so we'll pop this line off set that over there Two tranny cooler lines right here. I have to get off. Okay. Pop that clip out, and like it, we're replacing the radiator, so these clips we don't have to reuse them. So you can just pop them out. You can lose them. This one I'm gonna let fall. It's gonna be too difficult to try to hang on. There it goes. Okay. 
Now this radiator's gonna be a little bit of a pain in the butt, especially on this side with the lower hose, because there's really not much room. I'm just gonna pop the tranny lines out, get that out of the way. So when you're done, make sure you check the tranny fluid. So, let's pop this. Let me see if I can move this camera. Is there a uh, floor mat in there? No. Can you grab one for me? Okay, well, thank you. Okay, hopefully there's a better view. Okay. So I'm pulling the uppers. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. There's one shoulder tank inside on each side on the bottom. And they have these brackets. You should just like lift the hold the radiator in place. See it right there. Let's get the upper hose on. You like it? So that hose is off, we got the clamps off over there. Now I'm gonna have to get the lower tranny cooler line out. Shouldn't take very much. <clears throat> There's that. I'm gonna go grab my, um, my hose clamp pliers with the cable on it. So I'm gonna grab the lower hose off and then we'll pull the radiator out. Okay, I have my, um, you know, the clamp tool with the cable on it. I have one of those locked open, so it's pulling on the tension on the, the clamp. I'm going to go ahead and try to pull that hose off. Might be easier from underneath. Okay. Looks like it's moving a little bit. Like I said, it's tight down there. is a pain in the butt um i think what i'm gonna do on this this one right here try something different and loosen it up but i'm gonna lift it 
Well, I pulled the wrong bolt out. Look at how dumb I am. <laughs> Let's pull these ones out. I was wondering why it was moving with the intercooler. That's funny. Well, still, we'll try it this way. No, uh, maybe. Let's see. Nope, not gonna work. Okay. That's funny. Same, it appears. Let me grab a 13 swivel. Try a quarter inch 13 swivel socket. So, oh, wrong way. Oh, that actually worked. Hey, Eddie. How's it going? Not too bad. Oh. I'm good to see you too. Okay. Let's get the arrows out of the way. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to come out like this with the battery tray still in place. So, we're going to find that. Let's go ahead and get the shroud off. Fit. Okay. I'm gonna make sure the rubber is still in our grommets. Yeah. Cool. So almost there. Is it wanting to go down? Feels like the lower hose. Let's hold it. There it is. So you want to make sure the radiator is in the grooves, and I'll show you that. So on either side, there's tangs like that. See the little rubber? It's got to sit in that. So you want to make sure you get those in properly. And then, yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and center the radiator a little bit better. Get it straight. 
ました。Tightening the two upper mounts for right in a second. Ooh. There's that. Now I'm going to get the other side, the lower mount. On this side. And good, like I said, it goes in back in just like that. So make sure it stays straight when you tighten it. Usually do. Put the fan trail back in the radiator. Okay. Now we're back over here. This is what I just did over there. It's a little snug over here, so we're just going to do it like this. Like that. Try to get in as far as I can with my hand. Okay. Now we're gonna have to tighten it. It's gonna be a little fun because the radiator has to be pulled up. Now if you notice the way that I did this, I actually had to bolt on the, this side of the intercooler, which is right here. This bolt I left out so that you can lift it like this. You can get a little bit more lift on it. So I'll just keep that in mind. Because usually you have to take a battery tray out and it's a little tight. That actually made it quite easy. Okay, now we're gonna plug the transmission cooler lines back in. Just gonna pull these plugs out. Set those aside. And then you want to make sure these clip in really well. You don't want these popping out on you. Okay, you see that? You actually you won't be able to see it. Here it pop in. Put the lock on, make sure they stay. The upper you might be able to see a little bit better. Just want to pop it in, see like that? You can even verify on the back side the clips are through. So we're good there. Now I'm gonna go down and put the lower hose on. So it might take me a minute. easier than I thought. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put the, the hose on the, the upper radiator hose back on. I'm going to put it back on the way that they had it. The, uh, put two clamps. Okay, okay. It's the one with the tag, though. Alright. Okay, so next. Yeah, no, you're good. Just don't go forward. <laughs> okay. So hopefully you can see that a little bit. Okay, so we are going to be changing 
this idler pulley, this idler pulley, and the tensioner and the belt. Oh, and they all make the noise. These usually on these trucks, I personally would say every 100,000 miles. Change them, you know. When you do the belt, just change them, whether it be 60 or 100. Um, I've had them lock up sooner than that. Just depends on what you use, what kind of parts. If you use like Dayco or some cheap brand like that. Or even the gates ones kind of suck, but it is what it is. So we're gonna go ahead and get this one. Oh, my ratchet's dead. No, it's not. Just weak. Those two 14s. Okay, now let me get all the replacement parts ready. So I have, this is actually a brand new GM tensioner. GM, and you see the gates. It came in a GM box, but it is a gates. Oh, oh, almost lost that pulley. I personally prefer the GM pulley. These are gates as well. Um, you know, if you're changing them every uh, every so often, it's okay. You know, if you're gonna change them every 60, 100,000 miles, it's not a big deal. This is my belt. We're going to find out right now. Okay. Chevy's. I like doing these. These belts are easy. You see what I do is just get it wrapped around the everything. Make sure you're on the crank all the way. Ooh, that did not sound good. That's weird. It's still tensions. It's weird. Make sure it didn't crack. No, it's all still there. It's gates for you, unfortunately. So let's get this fan back in. If I can get it started today, it would be nice. <laughs> Just gotta find that one right spot. Right there. shroud back on it. I'm gonna put clips in it because it didn't have none when it came in. It's just not the way I like to do things. So we're gonna need clips and we're actually gonna need bolts too. Two bolts in there. So let me go, I'll be right back. Let me grab all that stuff. Okay, so let's start down here. We're gonna pop that clip in. Push clip in. That one. Okay, 
let's put the TCM back in. And for the TCM, I'm gonna go ahead and use the two bolts that were on the truck just because the TCM does not need to fall off this thing. So I'll use the two tens and then I have To replace it with on the other side. Uh, on that one, just do me a favor, let's write it all up. Look at the brakes for me, and then we'll go ahead and sell the oil change, okay? okay. Just look at the key, the customer wanted the rear brakes inspected, so let's check those. Yeah, just check. Just see if you can see the inner and outer pad on both sides, and check the fronts too. So those two are in. I put these ones, these are the ones that I found. The smaller washers, just because. I'm gonna put the, no, can't forget about this little toilet hose right here. Andy, do you install a lightning box or do I need to take that somewhere else? The alarm? Yeah, uh, someone's uh, broken in my car and I'm stalling my uh, snap out tools. Um, you'd have to go to like Nice. Yeah? For the for the alarm stuff. Okay, so we got that done. Um, let me put some of this stuff away and then I'll be right back. So I went ahead and attempted to try to tighten the bolts. That one won't tighten, obviously because it's broken. So we'll let them know. And we'll go ahead and install this air box with what clips it has left. Fortunately, the air boxes don't live a very long life. No matter how much you try to take care of them. Okay, now we're gonna connect the inlet. Huh. So we're putting the system under a vacuum right now. You can see we're just barely in the green. Let it go for a minute and then I'll close this off and make sure we can hold vacuum. But I'll prime the hose real quick just to get all the air out of it. The air box is all funky. So we're gonna close it off. Make sure we at least hold it for a second. Looks fine, so we're gonna go ahead and fill it. So we use uh this is concentrate 100 um, percent I'm gonna put two gallons of this in there and uh, two gallons of water. And this will take four gallons at least uh, when the radiators are replaced and these Duramaxes. So I'll bring it back when it's running. So here's the final product on the Duramax of the radiator. Everything's all back together. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and check the tranny fluid and make sure it's good. I'll let it sit, make sure the cool level's good and then uh, this one will be done. See you on the next one.